Come find out everything you need to know about how to play Star Wars Legion. Spiky bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear, and today we are going to tell you everything you need to know about the brand new Star Wars Legion game from FFG. So once you get your starter and get all of your miniatures put together and of course painted, which we have a bunch of tutorials here on the channel for everybody to check out, then it's time to learn how to play. And FFG has uh, the learning, they call it the learning battle, set up in their quick start guide. And you literally lay out all of your models just like this onto the table with a little 3x3 three three mat. You are ready to go. So there's three phases to each turn, the activate or the command phase, the activation phase, and the end phase where you clean up all your bonus tokens and such that are on the table and ready for the next round. So it's actually priority to the Imperial or the uh, Rebel player, but Darth Vader's way cooler, so we're on this side. So the first thing you do is you're going to order your troops into battle using your commander, which in this case is Vader for the starter game. So each player is going to grab one of their order cards, and they only use four for this demo game. Normally there's seven, because each commander is going to bring three of their very own. And they blind put a command card down. Now what happens is you flip this, and judging by the pips on it, whoever has the lowest pip gets to activate first. If you tie, you roll off one of the red save dice, and if you roll a block, who's ever, whoever has the turn counter, starting with the rebels on turn one, gets the priority themselves. So from there, any model within three inch or three range three, which is approximately 18 inches using the range finder here, gets orders. And depending on which one you use, this one gives you one order, this one gives you three, this one activates two, and this one activates one in case you need to just activate really quick in order to do some damage. So in this case, Vader is gonna activate or give orders to or ready one unit himself. Now when it comes around to the activation phase, you're going to blind draw these tokens and grab one and put it out. And in this case, this would be the speeder bikes. And then they would activate immediately. Now when you activate a unit, no matter what it is, whether it's an infantry or a vehicle, in this case these are our repulsor vehicles, you are going to choose the maneuver template that corresponds with their card. Now here, this is three pips, so you're going to grab the three pip maneuver template, uh, stormtroopers and things go to, and when you have a trooper, you just kind of put it down any way you want, and you can turn it, and they just go pretty much 360. When it comes to the case of vehicles, you have to actually lock the template in it, choosing your sergeant. In this case, we're going to do uh, the model that has the gun out, the holdout blaster, back shooting there, like in the Force Moon Endor, and these guys are going to move. Now, they have a compulsory movement, which is three. Did they have to do their full and complete movement there? And when you move a vehicle squadron, the second model in the unit just has to be within movement range one right there. So they're good. You only measure for that. And then this guy just goes ahead and moves on up. Now, this model here still has two actions. Every unit has two actions. They can aim, they can move, they can uh, shoot, or they can attack, or excuse me, dodge. The attack is a shoot or melee if they are in base to base. So in this case, I have my two. I'm going to say we're going to aim and then we're going to take some shots at the rebels directly ahead of us. So there's their target. Choosing that unit as the defender, the scout bikers are going to shoot at them. Now we gather up all their dice according to their card here. They get to select one weapon, so we're going to go with the blaster cannon. They are in the fixed front arc, which you can see here from uh, the little arcs that are notched in to the terrain right there. At range one to three, they get one of each dice, so we're going to measure out three inches, and they are definitely in range. Good to go there. So we're going to roll out our dice, and we didn't do so hot, but we got one surge, and their surge ability actually confers that to a hit. But before we adjust dice, we're going to reroll our dice. Excuse me, we're going to reroll two using our aim. Well, we're going to reroll a black dice because that's smarter. <laughs> 
and that's a way better odds there. So then we've got all of those hits. And now here's where terrain comes into play. So you've got this barricade here, which counts as two hard cover, which is going to negate two of your hits here. These surges convert to hits. We only have one critical. However, they come with an ability called impact on their cannon. And impact is going to change two of these to criticals which cannot be negated by cover or dodge tokens. So now these get negated by the hard cover, those go away, and the rebels need to make five, uh, three saves on three white dice, which we're gonna roll right here. So they have one block. So the rebel player would lose two of their um, unit members over there and they would select those two probably leaving the sergeant because you measure all your distances and cover and such from that. Now say the rebel player had given out two orders initially now they would have the opportunity to activate say the walker and the walker is really interesting because again vehicles lock in just like this but it's all off your arcs so this would be a good play right here to kind of turn it so that line of sight from the center of the model would not go through any barricades while trying to shoot at the, the closest speeder bike right there so that's not going to give any cover so what's cool about this is now we're going to grab the dice listed on the upgrade card of the laser cannon <laughs> this one's pretty good and we still have one action left so we're going to shoot We've moved and now we're going to shoot. We are in range with four now. If we were back here, we would not have been in range. And we have a surge and one hit. Our surge is going to change to a crit. We have no way to modify dice before that because we have no actions and no tokens on there. So one critical is going to ignore a cover and one regular hit is going to get through. These guys have one cover just out in the open because they're moving so fast they have cover one so they are not going to be able to negate that but they can negate this so the imperial player is going to have to roll one save it looks like their save is white so the imperial player is going to roll a save and it's a blank so one speeder bike is going to take a wound probably not on the sergeant and they're going to have two left so the speeder's taking a wound and they had already activated before so their order token is now uh, flipped face down. Next up you have an order pool and from the order pool we're going to randomly flip one of the order tokens which spoiler alert are both of your core units here of your stormtrooper so it doesn't matter which one I'm going to flip one of these I'm going to assign it to the to the ones I want to move which would be this unit here and like we showed you earlier with the movement template you only have to worry about moving the sergeant he's going to move up he's going to perform a double move to get to the front barricade and actually contact it. And then I'm going to move the rest of the stormtroopers up behind him at range one, that's called cohesion. And if the majority of these stormtroopers are obstructed, i.e. behind a barricade, then the rebels are going to have a harder time shooting them because they're gonna negate two of the dice coming in that actually hit them unless they're criticals so double move here they have done their move they are in position and another key thing to know about here is that the sergeant is in base to base with the barricade so the barricade is not going to provide any cover if the next round when the stormtroopers decide to fire that way because he is touching it so they will not be giving cover up to the rebels now something else might provide cover later on down the field but that's the case right now and then it goes back and forth through activations to the next turn where players will once again blind do their orders however that card goes away orders are discarded when they are used except for the standing orders card and sometimes some of the commander cards as well like Vader has a special ability where you can shuffle his back into the order pool etc so that is the basics of how the game is played you attack uh, in melee if you're in base to base everything else is pretty much range attacks at that point now when it comes to units themselves 
we'll uh, we'll go over Darth Vader because why not? <laughs> uh, there's going to be a points cost over here, so he's 200 points base. He is one unit, <laughs> one model in his unit. He's save is one red dice. Unfortunately, he has one red movement. His Health is 8, he has 8 wounds, and he cannot be panicked. He doesn't care. He is the Dark Lord of the Sith. <laughs> He's basically the Star Wars equivalent of Honey Badger. Now, he has some special abilities here, which um, they're all actually in... Yes, they are actually all in the starter. So, deflect ability is really cool, because if you have a dodge token out, at that point, if you pop the dodge token, you gain a surge ability of a block but you can also fling back on a surge one of the wounds back at them and they just suffer a wound which is the uh, equivalent in Star Wars of mortal wounds in Warhammer 40k he's immune to pierce pierce is pretty fierce uh, that is just gonna wreck most uh, folks and if you have any questions about keywords they're on the back of the card right there so whenever a weapon has a keyword pierce that three indicates it's going to cancel up to three block results. So when he gets a hold of something, he's <laughs> going to do the Lord's work against it. He has Master of the Force. So during the end phase, you may ready one of your Force upgrade cards, which he has three Force slots right over here for freezies. Relentless, after you perform a move action, you may perform a free attack action. Luke has something similar. It's called Charge. He has a melee attack only at six of the most destructive attack dice out there. They only have one miss on their D8 facing right there. So pretty, pretty brutal. He has impact three, pierce three. Impact is gonna change hits over to criticals to get through dodge tokens and cover. So like I said, he's got force upgrade here and there's a bunch of upgrade cards for most stuff out there. You can kind of see in this, this diagram right here, there's all the upgrade cards that units can have. Most vehicles have pilot and comms. Then there's grenades. These are weapons and hard points for a lot of different things. And then it kind of goes from there. So he only has force. Luke had some other things because Luke's kind of a hybrid from a normal infantry person to a uh, force user. So these are all force upgrade cards. You're not going to use these in the starter, but just to give you an idea of what they can do, uh, they are going to have a cost. So from 5 to 10 to 15 to 18 to 18. Gaining dodge tokens for a free action is pretty good. Now this symbol right here means tap or exhaust. So when you do it, this is now exhausted. And these do not untap or ready themselves unless you perform an action to ready all of your cards. Remember, you only have two actions on each guy. But these are free, so you can do them. The drawback is they do get exhausted. Force push, you can push things around at speed one. You can dish out suppression tokens. This one here... Um, just straight up choke somebody. Uh, one wound at range one. Saber throw is pretty good. Remember, he has six red dice over here. So he's going to be able to throw his saber at range one to two for half rounding up. So that's going to be four. Or no, excuse me, half rounding up. So that's going to be three. It's not plus one uh, damage right there. So he does get a little bit of a melee attack there. And remember, too, all of your commanders are going to come with a special orders cards that you can use. You can use up to seven of these in your command deck. The slowest one here, which might be a good one right off the bat, is at the end of Darth Vader's first activation. He can suffer a wound to shuffle his order token into the order pool, meaning that once this is out and you activate him, well, he could just shuffle this right back in which is pretty, pretty brutal, he would be able to activate twice in the first turn. So getting getting three movement out of him maybe, or throwing up shields or something, or dodge tokens seems pretty solid. And then there's some other epic orders right there that are right in front of you that are pretty neat to see. Another neat thing that isn't going to come into play in a demo, but is part of the game, is the way that you set up your game with your opponent so you're you know you're actually involving your opponent and uh you know kind of to determine how or what game you're going to play so you're going to be drawn and there's a specific way to do this in the in the rule book but i just thought i'd briefly mention it in this uh, things you need to know preview here so there's going to be conditions a deployment 
and also the mission itself right here. So there's a specific way to work through these cards and come up with your overall mission, your overall deployment, and a random little kind of uh, monkey wrench in the works that you guys have to be aware of. So no two games are going to be quite alike in Star Wars Legion. Well, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of how to play the brand new Star Wars Legion game from FFG. If you like these kind of features here on the channel, we've got a lot more tutorials on how to paint the models, as well as some overviews on how we painted Vader, Luke, the Speeders, and the Walker as well. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on these videos. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.